It's funny, like, I, I've been with my wife for 20 years now, right? And it's funny when you're with somebody that long. Like, yeah. You figure, at this point of our relationship, there's nothing she can do that could surprise me as far as, like, the racial stuff, right? The, the difference between black and white stuff. But she still be doing stuff that confuses me, right? Like, we got a pool in our backyard, and my wife put on, my wife put on a bathing suit, and she'll head to the backyard, and I'll be looking at her, and i like, what are you doing, baby, going swimming? She goes, no, I'm just gonna go lay out. I'm like, for what? <laughs> You're already black, baby. I mean, you have won the tanning game. I just, I just don't know what the goal is back there, you know? Like, literally, my wife will go outside, and an hour later, she'll come back in. She'll be like, Gary, look how dark I got. I was like, you was dark when you left. <laughs> she don't get no darker. I don't do that in the winter. I don't go in the snow and come back in. Baby, look how white I am. It's like I'm a snowman. The movie Powder. We got two boys and a girl, man, you know, you know. My daughter's the youngest and, you know, she's the, she's the militant one in the family, though. Man, she, like, she don't want to be white at all. Like, my boys don't care, they ain't tripping off nothing, but my daughter, man, everything that goes wrong in her life is my fault, my fault. Like, we, like I said, we got a pool in our backyard and the whole family be in the backyard swimming, you know, my wife and the boys, they be out there all day. My daughter's fair-skinned, so she's the last one in the family, so every 20, 30 minutes, me and her got to duck back in, put some aloe vera on. <laughs> Come back out. Just be mad. It's your fault, Dad. <laughs> like, I already, I already know. When my daughter gets to college, she's going to be leading all the protesters and all the marches, you know? God, I call her Kennedy Kaepernick. She's Christ. She's serious with her, you know? Like, my, my daughter got mad at me last year because I, I stood up during the national anthem. She goes, you just going to stand? I go, it's the seventh grade volleyball game. Let's break it down just a little bit, okay? 18 people in a junior high gym, okay? Like, my, my daughter's never watched NFL football in her life. Never watched a game. All of a sudden, all the Kaepernick stuff's been going on. Here comes my daughter. Hey, Dad, you watch NFL football? I go, yeah, I'm watching it. She goes, oh, I can't believe you. I'm not watching another game with Colin Kaepernick's back in the league. I can't believe he ain't gonna stick with me. I was like, oh, All right, I won't watch it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Even no, she ain't no. I appreciate that, Dad. Hey, we, just, we in this family together, baby. It's crazy too, cause like, like, like both my boys, both my boys like white girls. Both of them, they both like white girls. But my daughter likes black guys. <sighs> She gonna make me work. <laughs> I wish she'd bring a little white kid home. I could punk a white kid. What the f Sorry, sir. I don't know about that. Uh, black kid, what the f What the f sir? Oh, okay. All right. I see what you did there, young man. All right. Like, my daughter went to, my daughter went to her, her first homecoming dance last year, right? You know? Big brother asked her out, too. Big brother. I mean, this kid was 6'7", 270, 15 years old. That ain't normal, right? <laughs> but I will say this, the young man that took my daughter to homecoming, his parents are raising him right because his mom and dad made him call me to ask permission to take my daughter to homecoming. So I wasn't mad about that. Yeah. <laughs> it still was a weird phone conversation, you know, because the kid's 15, his voice is deeper than mine, you know? Answer the phone, I was like, hello? Uh, Miss Owen? Yeah? Uh, yeah, this PJ? Uh, I really, really want to take your daughter to homecoming. I was looking at my daughter like, who is this green mom on the phone? <laughs> who the f take you to homecoming? John Coffee? <laughs> and, and then my daughter, my daughter don't tell me he's 6'7". I think I got a little 50-year-old coming to my house. I got my game face on. I'm a punk to the Right? And as soon as he opened the door, I was like, what the, you ain't tell me he was this tall. <laughs> then he walked in the house and tried to build some kind of rapport with me, you know? Oh, uh, Mr. Owen, um, I, I just want you to know, sir, I, I think you're really funny. I said, ain't no funny around here. <laughs> he, 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 my I know what the you want, young man. I don't pop balls in real life. I don't, I don't. But on Instagram, I do. Like. <laughs> 
I be lying my ass off on Instagram. I'm, li I'm living a life that ain't mine half the time, you know? <laughs> Shoot, I'll, I'll do some little Bow Wow shit. I'll just lie on Instagram. <laughs> Yo, that shit, that shit was funny last year, though. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, like, a little over a year ago, like, guys, I think it's a year and a half ago, like, Bow Wow went on Instagram, right? And he posted a picture of a private jet. And he said, I'm flying from L.A. to New York, start working on this new TV show. So Bow Wow gave the impression that he was flying across country on a private jet. Well, Bow Wow makes the post, then this guy is on a United Airlines flight, looks in the back of the plane, Bow Wow's sitting there... <laughs> You know, regular ass 32B middle seat. So, so this dude gets on his Instagram, was like, this a lion, he on my flight right now. He takes a picture of Bow Wow, you know? So they had this thing for like three weeks on Instagram called the Bow Wow Challenge. It was hashtag Bow Wow Challenge. And all it was was people post shit that they wasn't doing, but they said they was doing it, but they wasn't doing it, but act like they was doing it, right? And I never did the Bow Wow Challenge, I never did, because I didn't want people going to my Instagram page looking at all the lies I be posting, you know? Because like I said, I don't pop bottles in real life. Oh my God, but I'll be at a nightclub, I'll grab two big ass Ace of Spades bottles. Tell my homeboy, take a picture of me real quick. I'll be on Instagram, yeah, I'm double fisted tonight, fuckers. I'm going in, hashtag doing what I do, post. Appreciate that, thanks a lot, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna get a Bud Light, thank you. So I remember one time I was at a marina, I was walking by all these boats, and right in the middle of the marina was a big ass yacht. I got on for the yacht, I was like, yep, about to take my new boat off for the day, see what the ocean's talking about, hashtag doing what I do, lies. I was never on that yacht, I was at Five Guys in the cheeseburger when I made that post, shit. <laughs> Let me tell you something, if you ever on my Instagram page and you see hashtag doing what I do, I'm lying, I'm <laughs> lying. That is COVID, Brian, I'm lying. I'm gonna lie about these shows. Watch. Watch when this shit airs. I'm <laughs> like, damn, San Antonio showed out. We sold out the AT&T Center four days straight. <laughs> damn, we did four shows? Hashtag doing what I do. <laughs> and don't be on my lie. I'm like, yeah, fuck you, man. You was on the river walk by the Empire Theater. <laughs> Just go and be like, Gary, I was there that night. I was in a suite. Hashtag sweet live. Shit. <laughs> Just go with the live. Ain't nobody gonna know. They see the stage. They don't know what the f yet. It's funny, too, looking back. Looking back on my life, I was thinking, like, like I, j I joined the Navy, like, right after high school. And I was, I was thinking, why did I join the Navy? And I, I, remember, I remember all the reasons because, you know, I was a, listen, I was, I was a broke kid living in a trailer park in Southern Ohio. The military is looking at me like, we can get that motherfucker right there, you know? Because <laughs> it was like my senior high school, there was about a week run where every day I came from school, there's a different recruiter at my trailer trying to get me to sign up, you know? And they just kept showing up, you know? Because I remember the Marine guy showed up first, the Marine recruiter, and I remember he got out of his car in front of my trailer, and I thought Marines had the best uniforms. When I saw him in that uniform, I said, damn, that a sweet. <laughs> I told my mom, I'm gonna join the Marines. Then he walked in my trailer. He was like, Gary, we are the few, the proud. I go, what's that mean? He goes, when shit pops off, we the first ones in, we the few. I was like, ooh, I'd rather be part of the many. I'm good on that shit. <laughs> What the hell are you trying to be first for? Shit, pace yourself, slow down. Somebody trying to be first in the fight? You don't know what's popping off. You the first one to fight, shit. Who's second or third? I'll join the third. I ain't trying to join the first. Who's third? I'll join third. I ain't trying to join first. I'll join third. Cause I, I will, listen, I'll give it to Marines. They are better Americans than me. Cause you're hearing stories about the Marines. You know, they'd be in Iraq, be in the desert. You know, be, yeah. You'd be in a store like, like, you'd be like, 33 Marines would be in Iraq, be in a desert, standing around, and then a grenade will drop in the middle of them, and one Marine will jump in a grenade, take the blow to save the other 32 Marines' lives. I'm like, man, if we're in a desert, and there's 33 of us, and a grenade drops in the middle, and I see it first, either 33 people die, or 32 people die. But if one's gonna make it, it's gonna be me, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, oh shit, grenade! <laughs>
Chris. Chris. See, the army guy came to my trailer. He was lying the whole time, lying his ass off. <laughs> army, army recruiter walked in my trailer with a straight face and was like, Gary, I heard you wrestle. I heard you're in your high school wrestling team. I said, yeah, I wrestle. He said, you know, if you join the army, you could try out for the army wrestling team. And if you make it, you just wrestle the whole time you're in the army. <laughs> I said, sir, I am three and 30 right now. I've won three times and lost 30. I am literally the worst wrestler in the state of Ohio as we speak. I didn't wrestle to wrestle. It was either come to the trailer park after school or I could hang out with wrestlers and wrestle every now and then. I just wrestle. I don't give a if I want to loss. I used to pin myself half the time, you know, because every time I get ready to wrestle somebody, I run on on the mat, I look across, they be resetting the time clock. I go, you ain't gonna need that. This ain't gonna take that long. You gonna need that clock. I've been looking at a guy, I'm about to wrestle him over here, sweating, warming up, smacking his leg, got his headphones on. I go, you're doing too much, man. This ain't that kind of match. <laughs> this dude listening to NWA, getting all fired up. This is more of a Kenny G type wrestling match. This is smooth jazz. We're gonna do this shit together. Follows me girls like that. Because I think nine times out of ten, guys go to nightclub. This is to me girls, I get it, you know, but if you ain't got thousand dollars of pop on bottles, you ain't gotta do it, man. I be telling dudes, man, if you wanna meet girls, Ain't got the money like that. Just listen. Just wait outside. Wait for the club to close. Everybody gotta leave. You know. You know. Hopefully a food truck pulls up. It's so easy to meet girls at the food truck when the club closes. Cause usually the girls leaving the nightclub when they wait to close, those girls are a little tipsy, discombobulated, got their shoes in their right hand. You know. They in the parking lot looking for the girls they came with, just walking around. Karen. <laughs> Karen. Who the fuck is Karen? I mean, I mean telling you, man, just wait for the food truck to pull up. Hopefully it's a taco truck. Everybody likes tacos late at night, you know? So, so when it's your turn, just wait in line. When it's your turn to order some tacos, look behind you, find a nice looking lady, offer some food. Just sit there. What's up? Wait, wait, wait. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want some tacos? Yeah, he wants to tell us. I'll take a taco. <laughs> All right. Two tacos. Hey man, let me get two tacos. Two dollars. Here you go. Have a couple tacos. Her girlfriends come over, where'd you get them tacos at? That dude right there, he nice. <laughs> you want some guacamole on it? Let me get a side of guacamole, 50 cents. Here you go, put some guacamole on tacos. <laughs> you spent $2.50. You got the same phone number David got. David spent $6,000 popping bottles in a nightclub. You know? <laughs> and trust me, she gonna remember you over David, you know? You know, the next day, you, could, you know, you, got real, you put food in her body, you nourished her, you know? The next day, think about it, David ain't gonna, ain't gonna wake up till one, two o'clock, all the Hennessy run through his system. All you gotta do is get up 9, 30, 10 in the morning, shoot a little good morning text. Good morning, beautiful. Good meeting you last night. Taco, taco, taco emoji. <laughs> Shit, that's a taco dude, yeah. Yeah, I like David's cool, that's a taco dude, yeah. Then you got a cheap ass anniversary date. Most people on anniversaries gotta go to nice steakhouses, nice restaurants. Nah, you and her right back at a taco truck. <laughs> She on Instagram, back where we met. <laughs> he got me extra cilantro, doing it big this year. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't, now listen, I, I don't want people to call me a liar or anything. Like, I don't pop balls in real life. I don't, I don't. But on Instagram, I do. Like, I be lying my ass off on Instagram. I'm, li I'm living a life that ain't mine half the time, you know? <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll do some little Bow Wow shit. I'll just lie on Instagram. <laughs> Yo, that shit, that shit was funny. Let me ask you this. Why is it every day I get on my phone or my iPad, and it seems like at some point during the day, I'm going to see somebody getting their ass kicked? Every day. Like, I'll be wondering, how do people got their phones out at the exact time people get knocked out? You know, because I, I honestly, I never see people get knocked out in real life, and I'm happy about that. I must be hanging out in the right areas. I'm good with that, you know?
Because, you know, every time I see somebody get knocked down on the Internet, first thing that goes to my brain is, uh, hope that dude ain't got no kids. Especially when it's a dude, like, hope that dude ain't got no kids, man. I mean, honestly, can you imagine being a dad and you get knocked out and somebody films it and that shit goes viral? Your kids ain't listening to you no more. What the hell are you gonna tell your son? Hey, be home at nine o'clock. Oh, you awake now, Dad? <laughs> but I tell you, watching all these people get knocked out on the internet, it opened my eyes to shit. It opened my eyes to how easy it is to get knocked out. And it's helped me, man. Like, I don't, get, I don't get in fights at all. I don't get in arguments. I will walk, run, skip, hide, duck. There's nothing you can say to me to make me want to fight you. Nothing, you know? Even when I go with my guys, man, I got, you know, I got my guys that open up for me and then my road manager, Brad. Every time we go out, you know, before we hit a club or something, they'll be asking me, hey, Gary, man, ship pops off now. You got our back? I was like, I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> Better find the exit. Run. I'm out, man. Shit, walk away. Walk away. I, it's, and every time I like go to the city, man, I always be getting messages with people like, hey, man, you need a bodyguard when you in town? Need security? And every time I go to these people's pages, it's always big, swole, muscle bound trying to be my bodyguards, you know? And let me tell you something. If I ever get to the point where I feel like I need a bodyguard just to go out and hang out, I ain't hiring some big swole motherfucker. No. You want to be my bodyguard? I'm asking you one question. How fast are you? You got to be faster than me because the shit pops off. You got to be at the car before I am, you know? I can't be over here waiting on your swole ass. Come on, man, they shoot Come on, man, they shoot All right, gear, here I come. Honestly, all, all the years I've been doing stand-up, over 20 years, right, there's only been one time in my entire comedy career where I felt like I was going to get my ass kicked after a show. I almost did. I, I'll never forget. It was just a couple years ago. I was in Detroit, Michigan. It was after my show. We had a little after party. And I don't know what this dude thought I said to him, and I didn't say nothing to him, but he had me hinned up against the wall, and I had nowhere to go. And I was like, am I going to get out of this shit, right? So this is how I got out of the fight. All I did was I put my hands up. I stopped making eye contact with a dude, and I just started agreeing with him. Whatever he said, I just went with it, you know? He's like, hey, man, I'm about to beat your ass. I was like, yeah, you probably will. <laughs> hey, man, you acting like you scared right now. Ain't nobody acting. <laughs> man, what the f*** you looking at? Not you, bro. But I, I got out of it, right? So the fight didn't happen. But I, I backed down. I did. I'll be the first man I backed down. So the next morning, I'm in my hotel room, right? It's about 9 a.m. My road manager, Brad, comes to my room. He's like, Gary, what happened last night? I was like, no, man, that dude tried to start a fight me. I told you, I ain't fighting nobody. He goes, um, Gary, can I be honest with you right now? I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, you, uh, you kind of look like a pussy last night. <laughs> I said, what do you mean I look like a pussy? He goes, I'm just saying, man, you backed down in front of everybody. You kind of look like a pussy. I said, well, who exactly? that I look like a pussy to. He goes, everybody was in that club. I go, well, who's in the club? He goes, I don't know. I go, exactly. <laughs> I don't give a about some strange mother I'm leaving in three hours, shit. Now, now my flight left Detroit at noon. At 4 p.m., I was safe and sound back in my own house. I was no longer state of Michigan. I was no longer city of Detroit. That's when I got on my Instagram page. I was like, oh shit. Somebody almost got these hands last night. <laughs> They're lucky I was feeling generous and shit. <laughs> Hashtag doing what I do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have motherfuckers on my page making comments. Mother, I was there. You back down. Delete. Not on my page. You wasn't shit. <laughs> Better take that shit to your page. On my page, some of us got these hands. Shit. <laughs> it was jazz hands, but still. Fuck, it. <laughs> fuck that. If you don't know what black Twitter is, if you say anything on social media that black Twitter deems disrespectful to black people or a black person, they come after you. And I don't know how many people are on black Twitter. I don't know if they have an office building with cubicles <laughs> or it's a group text that goes out. I don't know. All I know is I do this video towards Monique and for the next three days, every time I got on Twitter, it was over a hundred mentions of my name and it was just black Twitter down the line coming after me. And everybody was kind of saying the same thing, just in their own way. You know, stay in your lane. This don't concern you. Leave black shit to black people. Somebody went, newsflash, dot, dot, dot. 
you ain't black. I was like, damn! Woo! I'm dropping knowledge today. Shit, the dot, dot, dot up a little bit. I go, damn, did I just get a dramatic pause? But listen, <laughs> listen, I, I, give, I give respect to respect is due, man. Some, some people on black Twitter hit me with some good ass put downs. I mean, there was some good ones. I was looking at my phone like, ooh, that motherfucker got me on that one. That's a good one right there. I was showing my friends. Look at that motherfucker on me. I think, I think my favorite put down from black Twitter was somebody said, stay in your lane, white cracker bread. I was like, God damn. That is the whitest shit I've ever been called in my life, white cracker bread. Holy f that's white. How do you combine two separate white put-downs and make it one white crack of bread? It's so white. I didn't even get mad when I saw it. I just got thirsty. Holy shit, that's a dry ass put-down. At least put some milk on that shit. White crack of bread. It's so white. Shit, every time I go to Starbucks, they make them write that shit on my cup, you know? <laughs> How you doing? Can I get a latte? What's the name? White Cracker Bread. <laughs> and I make them say it like they mean it. I got a latte for White Cracker Bread? Mm -mm. Say it like I said it. <laughs> white Cracker Bread. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> shit, I didn't know what stay in your lane meant. I didn't know what that meant. I had to call one of my friends. I said, hey man, somebody on black Twitter told me stay in my lane. What exactly does that mean? I guess there's a white lane and a black lane on Twitter and you're not supposed to cross the lanes. That's stupid. Like if somebody gonna tell me stay in my lane, I've been thinking, have you been to my house? I'm like the only white person in my house, by the way. Like, like my wife's there, she's black. Her mom lives with us, she's black. We got our kids, they're mixed. Then my oldest son, any of mine. It's my stepson. He's full black. And I sent him to college all four years. I paid for everything, room, tuition, board, all that shit. So basically, I sent a black kid to college that wasn't mine, and you gonna tell me stay in my lane. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mom, I'm in my lane, shit. How many black kids you sent to college, black Twitter? You can suck my white cracker bread dick. It's a full loaf, ho. Call it wonder. White cracker bread. I was thinking other comedians messing up. Uh, Roseanne, Roseanne's messing up, man. Hell, Roseanne got fired from Roseanne. How the hell that happened? When Roseanne got fired from Roseanne, that's the only headline I saw. I didn't know why she got fired. So then I went back and talked about Twitter getting people in trouble. I looked at her tweets, and she sent some racy and sensitive tweets about the head of her network. So I'm reading it, and then I went, I guess I'm always just a little taken back by not a lot, not a lot. Just how, just how some white people just don't realize what you can and cannot say about black people. Like, like I'm around black people a lot, like a lot, you know? Like, <laughs> honestly, it's pretty easy what you can and cannot say, you know? Like, you can't say where Roseanne said on Twitter. I'm not gonna repeat it, you can't say that, you know? You can't say the M word, that's obvious, you know? Just some white people won't let that word go. They just won't let it go, you know? Why can't we say it? It's just a word. Can we say it? They be looking at me like I know the answer and shit. Gary, why can't we say it? I don't know, that's the rules. I got bigger shit to worry about than that one goddamn word. Hell, I watch that spelling be on ESPN every year. There's a lot of goddamn words out there we ain't using. Use one of them once in a while. There's so many words just sitting in Dick's Air right now unused. Cause I'm the only white person in my house. I hear the N word every day, room to room. Just ding, 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 ding. I still can't say it. And I'm paying the goddamn mortgage. That's just the rules. 
Yo, that'd be crazy if black people change the rules one day. <laughs> Just black people come out, all right. We don't give a shit, you can say it now. You'd have white guys walking around. Hear the news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black people said we're allowed to say the N-word, we're clear, we're good, we're allowed to say it. Are you shit me right now? <laughs> nah, we're approved, we're allowed, we can say it. We'll say it. Fuck <laughs> that, you say it first. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie though, sometimes when me and my wife are having sex, she calls me the N-word. It makes me feel good, it does, <laughs> man. <laughs> I be sitting there like, what the f say? I be in the bathroom at the words flexing up, what the f <laughs> Be calling all my friends up, you ain't gonna believe what the f my wife called me. What's she call you? Can't tell you. But she said it. Sam told us a big, uh, big military base is on here too, man. I was, I was staying, yeah. I was stationed here a long time ago. Yeah, I was stationed at Lackland a long time ago, right? Yeah. It's funny too, looking back, looking back at my life, I was thinking like, like I, j I joined the Navy like right after high school. And I was, I was thinking, why did I join the Navy? And I, I remember, I remember all the reasons because, you know, I was a, listen, I was, I was a broke kid living in a trailer park in Southern Ohio. The military is looking at me like, we can get that motherfucker right there, you know? Because <laughs> it was like my senior high school, there was about a week run where every day I came from school, there's a different recruiter at my trailer trying to get me to sign up, you know? And they just kept showing up, you know? Because I remember the Marine guy showed up first, the Marine recruiter, and I remember he got out of his car in front of my trailer, and I thought Marines had the best uniforms. When I saw him in that uniform, I said, damn, that motherfucker's sweet. <laughs> I told my mom, I'm gonna join the Marines. Then he walked in my trailer. He was like, Gary, we are the few, the proud. I go, what's that mean? He goes, when shit pops off, we the first ones in, we the few. I was like, ooh, I better be part of the many. I'm good on that shit. <laughs> but I'm glad Kevin and his wife are still together. I like Kaneko, I like Kevin, they're nice people. I don't see him break up over that. Just a little speedball in a relationship, you know? But now that it's, the time has passed and it's been over a year and stuff, now, now the timeline all makes sense because Kev went to Vegas, his homeboy tried to extort him for money, set him up in the hotel room. And the week before Kev went to Vegas, it had gotten published. He's the highest grossing comic in the country. He's worth like $200 million. So I remember, I remember when the shit first happened and I found out Kev's worth $200 million, I was telling everybody, I go, I got a feeling his wife's gonna forgive him. <laughs> I do. I think she's gonna find it in her heart to give him a second chance, man. Shit, I wish my wife was worth $200 million. Man, if my wife's worth $200 million, there is nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> she could do to make me leave her, man. I'm like herpes. I might lay low. I'm gonna pop up on your ass. Shit. Ain't no cure for this shit. It's for life, man. Let me tell you something. If my wife's worth $200 million, I would love to see TMZ try to hand me up at the airport on some bullshit with their cameras out trying to f my relationship. I'd have an answer for everything. There is nothing they can say to me or show me to shake my foundation, you know? I can be sitting at LAX waiting on my bags to come out. TMZ comes around the corners with their cameras. Shh, Gary Owen, Gary Owen! Did you see what happened? Your wife has a sex tape, but it just got released. Have you seen it? I'd be like, who the f you think taped it? <laughs> All my boys be calling me up. You who's gonna let your wife the mother do? She ain't him, he her. <laughs> She ain't get on top, man. She fucks me. <laughs> shit. Shit. And let me tell you something. If my wife's worth $200 million, she could tell me she's going to see another dude. I wouldn't give a shit. She could tell me, Gary, I'm going to see my friend this weekend. You tell him I said hello. <laughs> if you happy, we happy. Shit. <laughs> shit, my wife could be gone for the weekend with some other dude. I'd be at the house making Instagram posts. I just won't take a second and thank my lovely wife for all she does for this family. You are the best wife, mother, friend a man could have. You have provided us with this beautiful home. You enjoy your weekend away. We will be here when you get back.
<laughs> like, hashtag unbreakable. <laughs> the new year was crazy. It started off with uh, Lifetime Television, Aaron surviving R. Kelly right off the bat. Really appreciate that. Could have waited another couple months so I could enjoy his music for a little while longer. You gotta let somebody know when you're airing all the dirty laundry out. What's crazy about R. Kelly is, I watched that, I watched that documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, it was six episodes, and uh, it's crazy how his whole career is like before the piss and after the piss. That was like the whole timeline, you know? Like, I, I, and I didn't tape Surviving R. Kelly, I watched all six episodes live. Like, like, by episode four, I was the guy on Twitter, fuck R. Kelly. I ain't listen to his shit no more. He's deleted forever. <laughs> Three days later, I'm at a party. Step, step, side to side, bring it back. I went, oh shit. I ain't supposed to be dancing this no more. But I couldn't stop dancing. I go, oh my God, he is the Pied Piper. His music has taken over my legs. I swear, after, uh, after watching Surviving R. Kelly and all these other scandals that happen every week, I'm, I'm to the point in my career where I'm just happy to be an entertainer without a scandal right now, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I'm scared to open up my laptop in the morning. Cause I just be looking at it like, oh shit, it's today today. Cause I've never done anything to anybody, I'm not worried about that. Still don't mean somebody can't accuse me of shit, you know? Like it'd be nothing for a woman to come out of left field and be like, Gary Owen smacked my ass in 1992! <laughs> it's at a crisscross concert. <laughs> Your clothes were on backwards. <laughs> so proud. <laughs> I keep, I keep waiting for a white lady to come after me. I keep waiting for a white lady to be like, Gary Owen sexually harassed me. Now you know you lied. <laughs> Even my wife would be like, she bullshit. He ain't do that. I guess what's messed me up lately is like, like comedians are getting a lot of scandals now. It used to be like athletes and rappers had all the scandals. Now it's like comedians, we lead the charge. You know, you got, you got Bill Cosby, he's in jail, you know? It seems like every year Kevin Hart's gotta go through something. Like, like, like this last year was the Oscars. Like, I, I didn't like how the Oscars did Kevin. Like, how you gonna ask that man to host the Oscars and then the very next day ask him to apologize for some tweets he sent out over 10 years ago that you should have known about before he asked him to host the show anyways. And plus, he would just bullshit with his boys. There was nothing malicious behind his tweets. But all of a sudden, he did some gay tweets. And now these people were like, Kevin Hart's a homophobe. He's a homophobe. Let me tell you something. That dude is definitely not a homophobe. I know the guy 20 years, done three movies with him. One movie is called Ride Along. In that movie, I had number underwear and honey on my chest. That was my whole wardrobe, you know? And Kevin, and Kevin you know, Kevin had to lay on my chest, you know? So when you see that movie, that scene's only like two, three minutes long, but when we shot it, it took like 30, 35 minutes to get that scene right. And to Kevin's credit, he never left my chest. He stayed there all 35 minutes. You know? <laughs> what kind of homophobe's gonna lay in a man's chest for 35 minutes straight? Get the f out of here. True professional, committed to the craft, you know? 